Hello, Future David here. So I'm recording this little introduction that you're seeing right now on July 10th, 2021. The mission to Mars that you're about to watch was actually recorded on June 6th, 2021, so that's over a month ago. And that was just eight days after I picked up Orbiter again for the first time in six years. Since I was so very, very out of practice, this flight is just riddled with problems. But I won't, I won't spoil it by telling you whether or not we make it. Uh, I'll just, you'll have to watch it to find out. But since I don't necessarily upload my videos in the order they're recorded, it might seem a bit odd that I'm stumbling and fumbling so much in this video uh, since over the last couple weeks, you know, you've seen me do some other things. So you might wonder, well, you know, did you, why did you suddenly become so incompetent in the last, uh, between the last video and this one? Well, it's just because, again, they're not, they're not necessarily uploaded in the order that I record them in. Uh, so one example in this flight is um, I forgot to include an extra fuel module as part of my planning. Completely, completely escaped me. I also remember saying that when I'm setting up Transex and I'm looking at the DV cost, I'm like, why is this so expensive? Well, you know, because I, I kept saying that it should only cost like 2.5K DV to go to Mars. That doesn't make any sense. And if I had thought about it for a moment longer, I would have realized the DV cost to go from Earth to the moon is 3.1K, so going to Mars is obviously going to cost more than that. So, just a mental blunder on my part. I also remember fumbling the controls on takeoff. I remember fumbling the controls when I was at Mars. Uh, speaking of at Mars, I also had to do a fuel cheat uh, for a second time at Mars. So, the point is, the flight is it's not, it's not a very smooth ride. But I still thought it might be interesting for you guys to watch you know, somebody who was pretty competent with Orbiter, you know, several years ago, come back to it and just see how much of a difference there can be, you know, when you've taken such a large break, just how much, uh, how much you can forget and how unfamiliar you can become with the controls. So with all that said, I hope you enjoy the flight. Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this video, I'm starting a new series. My goal here is to go to Mars and land on the landing pad. So getting to Mars requires a, quite a bit of setup. So we probably won't actually get off the ground in this video. So if, you, if you're not interested in watching like the setup, then I would say go ahead and skip this video and move on to part two. Um, I used to land on Mars by, by going there. I had a runway on Mars, but this uh, Orbiter 2016 installation is pretty, pretty standard. I haven't really done too much tinkering with it. So I don't have a runway on Mars to land on, so I'm just going to plan on landing on the landing pad. And that will probably that would probably be necessary anyway because um, since Orbiter 2016 has, you know, terrain and whatnot, the, uh, the runway idea, I don't even know if it's valid anymore. I'll have to ask Dimitri about that. So with all that said, let's go ahead and switch camera views here. Jump inside and get started. So I'm going to switch over to these uh, larger views. And to assist myself in this, I did go back and watch my absolute beginner guide <laughs> uh, for, for at least the first couple parts of getting to Mars. So hopefully, um, and I didn't take any notes, so hopefully I can just remember what I have to do. So I'm going to bring up Transex on both sides. And we're going to, uh, let's see, so on this side... We're going to view over to setup. We're going to change our variables until we get to uh, planets, moons, and we need to escape from Earth. And then I'm going to go forward on this side, and we need to select our target planet, which in this case is going to be Mars. And I think we can go forward one more time to that side, even though we don't really need to be there yet, but just to get that stage created. And then we're going to go back over here now I'm already starting to feel like I forgot some things, but uh, hopefully I can just figure my way through it. So I'm not necessarily doing things in a specific sequence here, but just as I notice things. So one thing I'm noticing is that my PE distance is set to, you know, 7 point. Which it's way up there, basically. So what I want to have is a, a target altitude when I take off and get into orbit of, you know, 200, 300 kilometers, something like that. So the first thing I'm going to do, just because I see the PE distance right there in front of me, I'm going to change that from uh, 7.645 to 6... 
571E3, and that means that I'm going to shoot for a target um, a altitude of 200 kilometers. All right, so let me view through here and just kind of look at what my options are. Okay, so I don't think there's anything else in here that we need to do yet. So I'm going to go ahead and go forward on this side, and I'm going to set my I'm going to set my prograde to um, auto men, and then I'm going to go to the uh, the date, and I'm just going to try to find a date that works to go to Mars. And we're, today's date is uh, actually I guess this isn't today's date. I don't know what date that is. It's March 16th, but I don't oh 2001. Okay. Um, I guess one thing I could do. Let me let me actually go ahead and do this. Let me go. Uh, I think it's Control F4. I'm gonna go into the scenario editor, and I'm just gonna set the date to today. If I can remember how to do that. Date, and then uh, now. So now we have today's date, which is June sixth, twenty twenty one. I like I like I like uh, you know the idea of trying to use the day that I'm making the recording. Um, so with that in mind though, I probably, this is probably way off now it is, let me reset that. And I wonder if I just completely uh, crashed TransX though, because <laughs> I just gave it a massive date change, but hopefully, hopefully not. So we're going to go to the rough setting for starters, and as soon as I hit the button, uh, since I have the auto minimum set for prograde, it, it just automatically starts putting in the prograde that it thinks I need to get to Mars. Now, currently my pro closest approach is 385.9 gigameters, so we're really, really far away. So I'm just going to start adjusting the date until I can get, uh, you know, something that is, you know, at least reasonable. I'm not going for a DV freak run here by any means. I'm not going to use my spreadsheet to try to figure out fuel and all that I just I'm way 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 too out of practice for that kind of thing so as I'm in as I'm bringing the date further out into the future I can see you know I'm, I'm getting there you know my closest approach is coming down I'm still way off but you know we're getting close ish so let me go down to a medium setting here and th this actually doesn't look too bad to me um, I, I'm guessing I would be launching from here going around and this this looks like a decent Haman transfer so if I can make this work I feel pretty lucky actually actually so again I'm just moving the date forward uh, I, ideally I think we would actually be rendezvousing over here but you know if, if that if I can get there I'll, I'll go with that um, alternatively I'll have to you know go around until I find the next, uh, the next time that we we will have some kind of alignment. Uh, what is this? Five nine eight two four. Mm, I have no idea when that is. So just continuing. Let me back up here. Just continuing to put in some date. And it looks like it might not work. It looks like it might not come together. Well, I don't know. We're getting down. But now we we no longer have that nice looking Haman transfer. Now we're kind of going out beyond the orbit of Mars and swinging back in. But, uh, okay, okay, so, you know, it, it's not terrible, I don't think. Um, again, I'm not, go I'm not going for perfection here by any means. <laughs> just, uh, just trying to <clears throat> make it happen. And we can see over here in the encounter that we have, uh, we, we can get out to Mars with this eject date. So, uh, so we're probably just going to go with it. Um... 410 days though that's a really long time for a Mars flight so I, I, I think I'm actually gonna skip that to be honest that's that seems like an obnoxiously long time for a Mars flight <clears throat> I think it seems like it should be I, I can't remember off the top of my head what the number should be but I'm thinking it should be less than 200 days so let me let me just try one more let me try to find a slightly better a better date so I'm just gonna keep a couple things in mind here time of flight was 410 and the total Delta V was 3.7 which also seems high I want to say this should be closer to 2.5 or 2.8 if memory serves which it probably doesn't 
So let me skip that one and just go around a bit and try to find a little bit better of a date. So we're getting back in the ballpark. And just continue going forward. Mm, this is starting to look a bit better. We've got a slightly lower cost there, slightly less time. But these both still seem too high to me. But I think we did a little bit better on this date. But let's keep uh, driving in. So minimum altitude coming down, and there we are, we're at Mars. With a time of flight of 353 and a total delta V of 3.3. Um, Alright, just for the sake of not fiddling around forever, we'll take it. So, the first thing I want to do is, uh, I'm going to use that date editor again, and I'm going to get closer to this date, because we're way off from that, pretty far off from that. So, control F4, I'm going to bring up the scenario editor, and go to date, and we're going to put in this date, but we're going to take maybe a couple of days off of that. So, it's 6-0... Six zero five eight. Let's go five eight five. Mm, no, let's go a little bit closer than that. That's that's quite a bit. And let's apply that. So now we've just jumped into the future to October third, twenty twenty four. And we're gonna say done and close. Now when we did that, of course, um, you know, everything got updated and it throws our planning off. So let's go to the date again here and we're just going to go down to a finer setting and just try to uh, get that in a bit closer. And close approach coming down. It looks like we actually might have to back up the date. And yeah, we're going to have to back up the date. But that that doesn't surprise me when we're when, you know when we're jumping through time so far, the, uh, the calculations weren't all that close. Let's see here. So now we're only getting down to two point five though. I might have to add in one of these other variables. Let's try to put outward onto auto min and see if that gets a solution for us. So adding it outward is helping a little bit, helping a lot. It's not helping our fuel or our time, but but it, it looks like it will get us there by throwing some outward into this. I wonder how much it's using. I'll check in a second. Let me just get my minimum altitude down to Mars first, but then 606. Okay, we're going to have to change the date again. Um, and yeah, just anything like that, because whatever our minimum altitude is at Mars at this point just doesn't even matter. We're going to have to do a plane, uh, uh, a mid-course correction anyway. So I'm checking the date again. Now we're at 606, and this is 60586, so that's like 14 days out. Um, because things do change, I want to change the date again. Go back into the scenario editor and go date, and we're just going to go a couple days before that. So instead of 606, we're going to go 60598. Let's go with that. Apply that date change. Done. And you can see this time it didn't really throw things off too much just because we went a few days out, <clears throat> a few days forward instead of, um, you know, a couple years out into the future. So now we're at October 15th, 2024. All right. Uh, with that, though, I do want to just tap my date around a little bit just to see just to give uh, Transex a chance to reread everything. So that's now... Okay, well, we'll just go with what we had before, you know, something around 606, whatever. All right, now let me just check and so it, what kind of outward did it do? It's a lot of outward. But uh, 
again, I, I, just, I don't want to try to, you know, fiddle with things too much because I feel, I feel like I barely know what I'm doing anyway. So, let me think now. So we have that part of the plan set up, so the next thing we need to figure out is... So basically, that part of the plan takes us from low Earth orbit out to Mars, but we don't know how to get... We don't know what uh, what heading we need when we go from our landing site to low Earth orbit. So the next thing we need to figure out is our low Earth orbit, or our, our, our launch part of the plan. So we'll go back on this side. I've already got the PE distance set. So we need to go through the variables over to eject orientation. And we'll add in... Uh, well, let me actually change the... Let me go to view setup. And change the graph projection so it's not like this side on view. And probably plan. Okay, the plan looks like the one I want. So now we'll view back over to the escape plan. And we have uh, two headings that we can choose from, and we want the one that's closer to 90 degrees. And it looks like we have, so right here, if we take off and fly according to this heading, we'll have a heading of 30.53 degrees, which is not very close to 90. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty northeast uh, type of a heading. It's not, it's not as bad as it would be if we were trying to fly west, but it's still not great. However, we, we still have a couple of days before we the, before the date that we chose to launch. And the reason I gave myself a couple of extra days was specifically for this reason, so that we can just kind of sit here on the runway and determine a better time to, to actually leave the ground when our heading is better. But we, ha we also need to configure the XR2 so that we can actually survive this journey of 340 days. So I'm going to switch views over here. We're going to go to the upper panel. I think it's the upper panel. And yeah, we want to go to the payload camera. And at the very least, uh, we need to add in enough locks to the XR2 to make sure that we can get uh, we, that we can live long enough, we can breathe air long enough to get to Mars. So I'm going to go to the payload editor, and we're going to select payload 2, or, or rather we're going to select um, a locks, a full one, and by clicking there that puts a full locks into payload 2. But I don't know, I don't think it shows me up here how much time I have, so I have to go back to the lower panel and turn that off. So 420 days, which is more than I need. Uh, we need 340, so that gives us an extra 80 days. So if we want, we can drain off some locks. Uh, we don't have to. And speaking of, I should turn on external cooling so that we're not sitting here burning up our locks. So that takes care of our, of our, uh, of our locks. If we want, we can also dump this uh, crew habitat module because all it does is weigh down the vessel. Um, I would always include it before, but uh, I guess I'll go ahead and keep it. Um, and, and speaking of kind of the XR2 configuration, this is just a straight default configuration with default ISP, default locks, default APU, all that. Um, I'm not running like an expert configuration here. Looks like we can uh, fill up our tank here a little bit. And maybe our APU as well. So let's open. open the fuel hatch. And I'm just going to let it run at 10 for now. Uh, APU. Okay. So I just want to make sure everything's full. And we'll go ahead and close that. All right. So now I want to switch my attention back to uh, this idea of a of a launch heading. So we're just going to warp time forward at that for now. And we're going to follow this green line. Let me actually come down out of time warp a little bit. And I'm just going to follow that green line around until I can get a heading that's as close to 90 as possible. And 
and it will get to a point where it just like rapidly flips around so I want to be careful not to over overshoot looks like we're gonna maybe even get 90 exactly or really close to it 80 is great okay it's I think it's gonna flip around now so let me All right, so we're 83.65 that's super close to 90 so um, 598.27 let me maybe remember that it's because it I should write it down 598.27 because I just want to see if it's as if my heading is continuing to improve or if or if it's getting worse at this point Um, we're, we're so close to 90 at this point, though, I should probably just accept it. I don't know, though. Actually, we're getting really close, so... But at this point, 88 point something versus 90 exactly, eh, doesn't much matter. So I think we're just going to take... I think we're just going to take this here. Um, well, 59831, 59831. So let's just see if we can get... Oh, there it flipped. Okay, I saw it. But I think we have 90 exactly now. Or we're super close to it. Yeah, super close to it. So let me go to 0 0.1. All right, so I'm at 0 0.1 time warp right now because I just want to kind of hold what I have here. And uh, let's look at our encounter. So the encounter, we're still slamming into Mars. That's good. All right. So I think I think that's going to be our setup. So we're only at 19 minutes, but uh, again, you know, I think you know under 20 minutes is kind of ideal for YouTube. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just pause the simulation right here, and we're going to save the ride to orbit for the next video. Um, but at least we have our plan set up. So uh, if you like this part of the video, please do hit that like button. And I will see you in the next part.